You're right, guys. So uh, in today's episode, we thought we'd talk about the EHRC report. Uh, that is, I, I don't know. Joey, do you want to bring us in and explain what it is and why it's so significant? Sure. Um, so basically what happened is the Equality and Human Rights Commission, uh, which is a independent scrutiny panel organisation that looks at the way that the sort of uh, decisions made by the government and the processes put in place uh, to support legislation impact people of different minority groups and, and the idea is to ensure that everyone is being treated equally is having their human rights protected and so on and so forth um, so they released a report where they looked at the way disabled people were being impacted by sort of current practice across a broad range of categories and looking at sort of what looking at various different statistics and looking at various different outcomes for disabled people based on how things were going across the country as a whole. It's only UK focused but it, it, it produced some sort of very interesting inequalities that I think as disabled people we probably weren't that surprised by but seeing things put into uh, into, into such a stark contrast was a, was, was a really interesting thing. So they looked at areas like um, access to work, access to education, um, standards of living, um, being able to sort of participate in, in society and, and, and be sort of the question of identity, um, access to health, there are a few others that I can't remember off the top of my head, but essentially what they found is across every category that they looked at, all six categories, disabled people were coming off worse than the non-disabled people. So they were less likely to be in employment, uh, they were more likely to live in poverty, they were less likely to complete education and certainly less likely to attain highly in education if they were uh, registered as having special educational needs, uh, more likely to, to die younger as a result of poor medical decisions, poor medical administration, and that extends to mental health as well, not just, not just physical health, and, and just generally less able to, to participate in society in an equal way. So as I say, this is something that I don't think came as, certainly didn't come as a surprise to me, knowing what I know about disability and the way that it, it, it does impact every area of your life, even if you have the most advantages you possibly can have, being disabled does still impact you. And so um, the question now is, what does that mean? Is anything going to come out of it? Is, is, are any of these findings going to be taken seriously or not? Um, and and you know, that's, that's yet to be seen because mm. it's only been a week since the report was published. Mm. There are certain recommendations made in the report that, I really hope the, the government start to look at and, and, and take more seriously. Yeah, absolutely. And and this report was just for the UK? Are, are, are they doing reports for different countries as well? Is the UK just... Oh, no, they're just, a, they're just a UK body. So yeah. um, they, they would only focus on, on, on the UK. There is a... There is a um, an equality commission uh, attached to the United Nations, but that's a separate thing. Um, they they look at all sorts of all sorts of other stuff across the world, but one in particular we would only see happening in the UK. Yeah, and Michaela, what are your thoughts on on all of this? So yeah, David Isaac, who's the chair of the Equality and Human Rights Commission in the UK, actually went as far to say that that disabled people are being treated as second class citizens and second class citizens was his words, and. I'm disabled. I have experienced quite a, a number of quite harsh realities of that and have been in court more than once um, to fight for something. And, and unfortunately, this report shows how much disabled people must fight for everything they get. If you're non disabled and you're not registered as having special educational needs, you're three times more likely to have a qualification. Now, that doesn't mean a degree, that just means a GCSE. A simple qualification. There's no way that that should be the case. You shouldn't be three times more likely simply because your legs work or because your ears work or because your eyes work. The way society wants them to work. And I think that's really important that people recognise what really what the EHRC have said is that society isn't adapting the way it should be to allow disabled people to participate. And that can be something as simple as putting a ramp in or having the expectation of achievement on a young person's shoulders from their young. Um, so I was no age, I was expected to achieve it at school. If I didn't know how to read, I was going to learn how to read. If I wasn't good at math, I was going to get the extra help I needed to attain. Because if I didn't attain, I wouldn't get a good job and I wouldn't lead to a good life. Mm-hmm. And you know, the, Im- the amount of disabled people in poverty is just, it's ridiculous. You know, to say that 
almost 20 percent of disabled people between the age of 16 and 64 are in food poverty it's just it's ludicrous and please bear in mind that a lot of disabled people rely on artificial food and these are people who like me who rely on at least some of their nutrition and um, being artificial and coming from the nhs and then you get down to things like being able to access um cancer tests which we talked about before or being able to go to your GP and being able to be thoroughly examined. These are all things that we're lacking in the UK that isn't coming forward that disabled people can't access. But not because the access isn't there, because society isn't adapting to make that access work for a disabled person. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what your disability is, I'm deaf as well as being disabled. And for me, deafness could be a huge barrier. And for people who don't know them, maybe talk to me behind me, and I genuinely won't hear them. And they just think they're and rude. To, and yeah, then they're like, think I'm well, we're not helping disabled people now. And it goes yeah. another way. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I'm lucky that anyone professional or in education that I work with, I try to make them as aware of it as I possibly can. And so, like, if there's noise in the room or you're behind me, I can't promise you I'll hear you, but I'll, I'll do my best, I don't always pick up all sound. You know, those are little things, those are little attitudes that really make a big difference. And I think that that's at the cost of our problem right now, you know, attitudes are stuck. Back in the 1990s when the DDA was brought into force, and in Northern Ireland we're still stuck with the DDA, unfortunately. Um, if we can get a government back up and running, that'll be the first thing I'll be asking to change. But, you know, we have the Equality Act now, we're, we're further forward than we used to be, but attitudes are stuck. Um, the laws there, but again, the onus is on disabled people to push that forward. And there are a lot of problems, but a lot of progress. Things are so, so much better than, than when I was little. You know, from being able to get on a bus to being able to get into a taxi. And I mean, literally, just being able to get into the vehicle. I'm not talking about the arguments for prams or anything like that, just to be able to get into a taxi in Northern Ireland used to be a huge deal. My dad was a house driver, so I know about it. And yeah, you know, we've, we've come a really long way and I think we should reflect on that. But the EHS, EHRC are right in saying that we are stuck in a 20 year time warp and we've got to start moving forward again. We've got to start making real tangible progress, like the change in the whole act with um, the sessions once it's five and once it's seven, which mean that disabled people will not be charged extra fees in the taxi in England, Scotland, and Wales. That's a huge step forward, but we need more of those. And more of those over time, we're getting us to where we need to be. Equal citizens that really contribute to society, that pay taxes, that contribute to the NHS. And we're all equal citizens at that point. And Everybody's life is much better off and much more diverse for it. Yeah, I don't know, Zoe. What do you think the best way forward is? Because that's why I, I look. I'll just say that's why I ask about looking at different countries as well. Because do they suggest anything as to things we can change? You know, what are your views? Do you think that this is just there are simple things we can change, or is this a whole structural thing problem? I guess. It's a hard one because I think you know what Michaela says is true that a lot of it is 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 about attitudes towards disabled people. Um, certainly, you know, the, I I come across two attitudes towards disabled people um, in my sort of day to day life. One, um, people that assume that everything is fine, um, that you know I'll just kind of because that's the way I present myself. You know, I, I present myself in a way that's kind of like, I can do anything you can do. You know, just let me sort myself out and I'll be fine. So people kind of take that and therefore assume that nothing really needs to be done. I'm, I'm just going to be all right, um, whatever happens. And then on the other end of the spectrum is, is, is people who assume that disabled people can't do anything um, and actually should probably just, you know, they should be fine to just like stay in the house, um, you know, and have somebody come in and, 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 and open a tin of beans for them every, every, every four hours or so. And, and, and really that's, that's all that they need and that's all that they want. And neither of those attitudes is particularly helpful. The yeah. first is slightly better in that it's kind of, a, I guess, a more positive view of disability, but it doesn't really take into account all of the 
all of the very you know all of the small fights that we constantly have to have with transport with work with education you know it, there's, there's all of these very small things that we are constantly having to battle but then as yeah, i say at the other end of the spectrum is the idea that well maybe we should just give up and not have those fights in the first mm. place um so while people still stick to either of those views it's really hard to to, to push forward and, and and to make those changes mm. because it's just there's just not an expectation um, that disabled people will participate and want to participate um, and it's something that I've come up against you know my whole life the the idea that I wanted to leave home and go to university even my social worker was like really no one's ever done that before and when you get asked like that from people who are supposed to be helping you then you can completely see why for a lot of disabled people it just doesn't become a reality you know so I, I, I don't I don't know I don't know if there are quick wins certainly there are bits of legislation that it will help certainly things like the Equality Act could be much much more strongly enforced and businesses could be forced to make more space for disabled customers for example that would get people out into society more that would get people more exposed to disabled people out and about in pubs in bars and shops mm. um, in cinemas and theatres and sort of be more integrated but there's still that big shift in, in opinion that, that has to happen I think before people are going to start really taking this seriously yeah, I you think know, the big the big link between both of those is accepting and acknowledging and championing and the fact that disabled lives are worth living. That it's not that they're not worth living, and I think that's where we need to start. And that's you know, I think particularly important for me today. Um, mm. Disabled lives are worth living. Yeah, no, I think that, that that way of putting it between the two polarizing thoughts and really just the importance of bringing those right to the middle to see that, you know, on the one hand, it, stuff might be hard, you might need help. And on the other hand, when things are all going well, you still need help. Uh, that That's, you know, because obviously the idea that people with disabilities well, I'll just leave them be then. That's offensive and and ridiculous. But you know, when it's there's almost that catch twenty two in it. Like as you said, you were treated sort of like that sometimes, and then uh, when you then wanted to break out of that and say, no, wait, I can do things. Then all of a sudden, people think, oh well, she doesn't need any help then, and that's a really unhelpful idea. And and it, it is this catch twenty two that then you end up going round in circles because you you need of sort of one opinion but also need the other as well in in this sort of middle ground you need to be exactly disabled enough that's it yeah, and no it. one is no one that that magic disabled person or the magic disabled person would actually not really i i, I not really be disabled at all so with the magic disabled person would be uh, not disabled enough that they would restrict them from doing anything but still, just just maybe just maybe use a wheelchair, I guess, for fun. Yeah, it's a disabled person in 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 soap operas and, and films. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be keeping a look on this. Well, certainly over the coming months, and I, th I think we'll put some of these in maybe in some JPEGs, make them sociable shareables, some of the stats and whatnot to try and get it out. Because again, I think a lot of it is not only a lot of it is the structures that we have in place in society, but a lot of this is kind of attitudes based. So I think if we can get changing attitudes which we always try and do and really showing these facts and showing the realities of things then hopefully we can make a change um so do you want to round us off a, a conclusion yeah i think it's it's a positive step that we've got this kind of um formal report this official report that affirms what as i say a lot of us unofficially knew to be the case anyway i hope that people will find the statistics and the shocking or at least interesting um, and and that it will spur people into action or at least lead people to maybe reevaluate the assumptions that they make about disabled people that for me would be a good outcome but what I also want to see is, is some real concrete steps that can be taken real sort of legislation the real push for equality that comes from a place of authority um, to try and deal with some of these inequalities because it's been the rhetoric for a few years now where we've talked about inequalities and discrimination and all of this kind of uh, just about managing hard working families and there's all this rhetoric going on about how people are struggling and how people find things difficult and what i don't want is for these findings to just kind of add to that 
and just kind of be lost in that in that whole worry and that whole conversation that whole dialogue about how you know it's difficult for people generally at the moment yes yes it is difficult for people generally but these are this is specific and real discrimination against the minority group against the very vulnerable group and i want that to be taken seriously and i, and I, and I want this report to have a point point more than just giving us something to talk about on muscle out for half an hour you know it, i really hope that we'll, we'll see something something real coming out of it as a result yeah and i think that's the thing i think sometimes these stories just run the risk of normalizing situations uh, because we just see it so often it just all blends into one and we think ah well that's life so hopefully we can normalize disability and get rid of these situations yeah but yeah thanks for watching as always guys and we'll keep you updated remember to like and subscribe and everything else and we'll see you all again soon Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.